So you're about to do your property tax return, are you? Well, are you about to pay too much tax to HMRC? Check out this video as I might be able to save you some money. Hi everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich from Optimize Accountants and in this video we're going to be talking about property tax returns and in particular, are you paying too much tax? Well, let's go and find out in this video. We're going to first start on the two boxes that you can see here, repairs and maintenance, and we've got cost of services, including wages. And typically I'm talking about people doing work on your property, or you've got letting agents that manage your property, which is the second box. Now, not keeping receipts, that's a big thing. So you might have a builder that says, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. You pay me uh, £2,000 instead of 2500 and we'll just do it in cash. And what that builder is basically saying to you is, I want to evade tax and you can get £500 discount. And that's great. But then what you will find is that you do your tax return and your accountant will say, well, I can see you've got £2,000 going out of your bank account. What's this for? He said, oh yes, it's for this work. Can you put it through? And quite rightly, that accountant will say, well, where's the receipt? You say, well, I did it in cash, which you've just then admitted to helping that person become a tax evader, not an avoider. Avoider is okay, but an evader. And now you have helped them out with that. And you are as much culpable as they are. So it comes a deadly sin. And not only that, but you cannot offset that £2,000. So you've lost that tax. And if you're a high rate taxpayer, well, to be honest, you've just lost out. So it's something for you to consider. The other side to it is that people do not organize themselves. I and mean, that might not be you, it might be your friend, right? Whereby they haven't kept the receipts, they've put them on the side, it's gone onto the rubbish pile, then it's gone in the bin and it's not being stored electronically, it's not being filed correctly, and therefore still cannot offset that cost. And no, the accountant should not be putting through costs that says from B&Q, because that could be for your home, and there's no proof that it wasn't on a day that you did a refurbishment on your property. So it's really difficult to assemble that evidence. The other side to it is accountants. Now, how many of you, honestly, put in comments box below, please, and please be truthful about this. How many of you really thoroughly review the accountants that you work with and the tax returns that they prepare for you? Or do you just say, yeah, it looks right, and then send them off? Because what sometimes happens is that they will say, hmm, there's a big item of expenditure here, £3,000, oh, this looks risky. I'll put it as capital. And basically what that means is that that £3,000 worth of invoicing will not be offset against your rental income, will not help you reduce tax, and basically adds to your invoicing. Double whammy here, because if they do not tell you that that fee, that invoice, has been identified as capital, you may not offset it against your capital gains tax either when you come to sell the property, because you weren't even aware of it. So what is your communication like with your accountant? And one of the big things that we do at Optimize Accountants is we've got a 100 point checklist, but we make sure that the client knows exactly what we've put in their tax return. Other allowable property expenses, what are they? And again, most people will look at this blank and say, well, what is that? Oh, ignore it and move on. But actually, there are some huge amount of costs that you might have. Have you bought a property recently? You might have gone to the estate agent. You might have done a viewing on a property that you have purchased. You might have gone to the property to have it refurbished with your builder. You might have gone to the property with your letting agent once it's all done. How many times do you go to see that property? How many times do you log that journey in your accounts? Did you know that you can gain 45 pence per mile for one person? But what if you go with your spouse, like I do when I go to see properties, my wife and I will go to that property together. We like spending time together and we'll go to that property. Now, that means we can get an extra five pence. It's an extra five pence per person on top of the 45 pence per mile. So in that case, it's 50 pence, but it could be 55 pence for three people 
etc. Hotel costs. How many times will you go to a property or a training event or you are too far away from your home, therefore you stay in hotels? How many of you put those expenses through? Not many. Well, did you know you should be able to offset that cost and not just the hotel cost, but also the, uh, the, the subsistence costs that you incur? Subsistence costs uh, will include your food and your drinks, as long as it's reasonable and it stays with the HMRC allowances, which do fluctuate time to time. But all of those costs will go in the allowable other costs, but it really doesn't tell you too much. HMRC have been artfully vague so that you don't put anything in there and you end up paying too much tax. Next, we are going to be looking at replacing domestic items. Now, if you've purchased a house and you have got furniture in that property, what can you do to reduce tax? Well, there's two elements here. If you have got a property, let's say of £200,000, and you've got £10,000 worth of chattels, it's called, but fixtures of furniture, it might be TVs, it might be cabinets, it might be beds, sofas, that they might be leaving behind. Now, that is a chattel. It will help you reduce stamp duty to land tax in the first instance because stamp duty to land tax is only on bricks and mortar, not on the chattels, not on the furniture, not on the electricals that has been left in that property. So you could help yourself to reduce that SDLT charge. In addition, you could have a tax reduction on your tax return because if you are replacing those items, you can put the cost of those replacement items in your tax return. Not the initial cost, but the replacement items. So if you bought a property with lots of furniture in, and let's imagine that you bought a property and it's got a sofa in there, you agreed to buy that furniture, and then you replace that sofa with a new one, well, that replacement cost will then be offset against your rental income on your tax return. How many of you do that? I have to be honest with you, not many of our clients still do, even though we ask them the question, what is that expenditure? Did you know you can offset it against your tax return? They don't put it in their bookkeeping, but we remind them and therefore they can help themselves to set those tax savings. Now, when it comes to capital revenue, when you do buy a property, and you're replacing furniture. Most accountants will instantly say it's capital and therefore you cannot get the benefits of that item against your tax return. It's a mistake. Replacement items is allowed. All you need to do is just go onto HMLC's manual and find that out for yourself. Residential property finance costs. Now, this is amazing um, because we know that section 24 mortgage interest relief cap means that you cannot offset 100% of the finance cost. What you get instead is a 20% tax reducer of whatever the mortgage is. So if it's a thousand pounds worth of mortgage, you will get a 200 pounds tax credit in a sense. But some accountants we've seen don't even put any of the finance costs in at all. So the client has lost out. They have paid more tax than they need to. Is that something that you're doing? We have seen clients that come to us that did their own tax return and thought, well, I thought you were no longer able to offset that. Well, you're not allowed to offset against your rental income, but what about the tax credit of 20%? And they look confused sometimes because the language around the mortgage interest cost for HMRC is confusing. Refinance costs as well. If you have bought a property, you do it up, then you refinance it six, nine, 12 months later on, that refinance cost can also be put into your tax return. And sure, you only get 20% tax relief on that cost, but is that not better than nothing at all?